everyone. Welcome to the research series at the Ostrom Workshop. Uh, today, our speaker is Renzo de la Riva Aguero, presenting his paper with the title, Why does service-specific municipal administrative capacity affect the performance of simple and complex services differently? Renzo is a public policy PhD candidate at the O'Neill School of Public and Environmental Affairs and the Department of Political Science at Indiana University in Bloomington. His work focuses on public service provision and engages with research on local administrative capacity, community-based CSOs, collaborative governance, and environmental sustainability at the local level. Next year, he will join the University of Connecticut School of Public Policy as an assistant professor of public management. Renzo, floor is yours. Thank you, Homa. Thank you for your introduction. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for, for being here uh, physically and on Zoom. And I want to say a special thank you for, uh, for the, to the workshop, uh, for all the support for my research. It has been of, uh, really important uh, for me to be able to conduct uh, field work based on the support I received from the workshop. So thank you. Thank you so much. Um, my name is Renzo de la Riva Guero. It's not four last names, it's just one, but it's a little complicated. It can be confusing, but uh, my first name is Renzo. I work on local governance and service delivery. Um, and the focus of my work actually questions uh, the way we approach administrative capacity, which tends to be focused on general capacity and how it affects performance, general capacity of bureaucracies. Uh, but today I'm going to talk about a specific service specific administrative capacity, which looks at what happens at the office level uh, of municipalities in particular, and trying to understand how that affects uh, performance differences between services that vary in complexity. And I use a case of two waste management services at the municipal level, of course, uh, one more complex, one more simple in uh, Peruvian local governments to, to illustrate this. So a core puzzle of my research is that while some municipalities can deliver a simple service well, like waste collection, but at the same time have serious limitations to deliver a more complex one, uh, such as waste disposal uh, that has significant implication not only on the environment, but also as a result of inadequate management of the service itself, causing a series of issues, uh, not only for the environment or health. And at the same time, these municipalities uh, cannot also manage composting and recycling services locally in an adequate way. There are other municipalities that can get both services right, collecting waste from the streets, and they can also dispose of their waste adequately using trained personnel and the, adequate, the proper equipment to manage the process uh, in an efficient and an effective way. And here you see the result of uh, work being done after one hour from the previous picture in which uh, with the equipment and the people that have the experience, they are able to, uh, to put everything, all the waste in neat piles uh, after the truck had unloaded all the waste in the landfill. And the same municipalities can also handle other uh, parts of the disposal process well, uh, which, and, and in a professional way, like composting and recycling, putting everything in neat piles, piles and with proper treatment. Now, these are issues that uh, these performance issues occur on a global scale. And the evidence shows that uh, around the world, municipalities, mostly in the global south, they, can, they have relatively higher waste collection rates, but at the same time, they have very low proper disposal waste. And in the blue bars, you can see uh, improper ways of disposing of waste, dumping it openly in, in, in open spaces, uh, which might seem low for Latin America and other parts of the global south. But this data coming from the World Bank uh, actually masks larger local disparities. So it's actually using data from larger municipalities that have more resources and more capabilities so uh, in fact, if we were to collect all the data, we would be seeing larger percentages of waste that is, imp that is improperly disposed of, uh, openly dumped. Uh, that's the one I'm using. Now, another uh, important aspect of waste management and waste management differences in terms of performance uh, is that uh, inadequate management of waste not only has the effect that we are uh, used to, that has to do with uh, property values, so reducing property values, affecting public health. It also has environmental consequences. And it, oh, in mismanaged waste, waste produces uh, highly contaminant greenhouse gas, like methane, 
that is two times more contaminant than carbon dioxide, especially in the short term. And it also blocks uh, drains and sewages that complicates, it, complicates the consequences of heavy rain that has increased over the years, especially with uh, climate change happening. Um, yeah. And so based on this, uh, the question I asked for this particular chapter of my dissertation, uh, which is a qualitative chapter, uh, I ask why the service specific municipal administrative capacity affect the performance of both simple and complex services different? Why does this specific uh, type of capability has, doesn't have the same effect on improving both simple waste collection and complex waste disposal? And this is as opposed to uh, general aggregate measures of capacity. Now, another aspect to consider is that I'm aware that political interests, uh, civil society organizations involvement, local collaborative governance are key factors. And I study them in my other chapter, especially a quantitative one. Uh, service specific capacity seems to be the only one that is more influential on both. And this is based on quantitative findings from this article I recently published that shows that of all factors, only service specific capacity that is relevant for waste management uh, improves both waste collection and uh, waste disposal performance. And a key question is, uh, what type of administrative capacity, capacity matters for service performance? And also, uh, what happens if services vary in complexity? And uh, we tend to look at general capacity measures. Um, sorry. that tend to focus on uh, the overall structure of, of the municipality, the budget, the human resource quality, uh, whether the municipality has IT uh, and the leadership of the whole municipality. But this, these measures don't necessarily uh, relate to, directly relate to the service that, uh, that we are studying usually. They tend to be aggregate measures, but we know less about the capacity that, that, that is available within the office itself providing the service. Especially, this is especially important if the services are more complex. Um, so carefully considering the complexity of the service in light of the capacity available at the office level is, is crucial. So looking within the, the administrative unit responsible for service delivery is important for, for performance. And in terms of um, service difference, since uh, the way I classify uh, simple and complex services is based on this, uh, this table where I identify three different dimensions based on the task of the service that allows me to identify whether it's more simple and more complex, uh, mainly focusing on uh, services that are within the same uh, policy domain. So waste management have different types of services. In this case, I look at simple waste collection. That's how I conclude that it's simple based on this. And, and the waste disposal, that is the more complex part of the service. And here it is based on uh, the specificity of the assets and the management and operational uh, dimension, uh, the specificity of the human assets in terms of technical knowledge. And then of course, both aspects have, an, have implications over the cost. And so services that are more asset specific uh, tend to be more costly as well for, for those reasons. And so I, based on this, I developed these three hypotheses. Uh, the first one being uh, stating that it, it is sufficient to have low service-specific municipal administrative capacity to deliver a ser simple, ser simple service adequately. The second one states that it is necessary to have high service-specific municipal administrative capacity to perform adequately in the delivery of a more complex service. That would be waste disposal. And the third one is that it's necessary that the municipal office is specialized and equipped to manage a complex service to achieve high performance. The data I use is based on four and, four and a half months of, uh, of field work in three municipalities in Peru. I use three cases. These are medium-sized municipalities. Um, and the reason is that uh, they provide me more insights uh, and strengthens generalizability. Larger municipalities are unrepresentative of all municipalities, especially in this country, because they, they have more resources and they don't confront the challenges that smaller municipalities have. And smaller municipalities, while generalizable, they have, more, they have simplified operations and also simplified administrative conditions. So 
they wouldn't give me the insights that I wanted to, I needed to gather to be able to understand why this happens at the local level. Uh, and this is based on collecting a number of interviews with uh, 118 people, 28 ethnographic observations, 90 systematic social observations, and secondary source analysis. Systematic social observations is a novel technique used mostly in sociology. Uh, used using a protocol, it allows you to uh, walk around, make observations, but quantify them. Uh, and, the, and then able to measure whatever you want to measure, not qualitatively, so qualitatively ob observing the fact, the, what's what the events, but then you can quantify that information using a set of uh, measures that this technique uh, in involves. So I use that especially to collect data on my dependent variables. Why Peru? Uh, Peru is a really good case because more municipalities have been collecting more waste over the years but less are disposing of it adequately. And also considering that uh, Peru's GDP, the high spatial inequality it has and the waste service issues, it allows us, given this particular case of the country and its municipalities, allows us to have more insights about uh, for, for a range of country conditions that can be comparable to different, uh, different types of municipalities across different countries. The three municipal case studies uh, were selected, selected first on uh, the two variables based on this two by two, uh, table or box that I use looking at administrative capacity on one side and civil society organization involvement. Uh, I gathered this data quantitatively. I created an index to be able to measure both uh, variables. And what I wanted to do is to get uh, three cases that would allow me to, uh, to get insights and more, uh, more uh, detailed understanding of how, uh, how performance would look like and what would be the explanations in a case in which capacity is low and CSO involvement is low. Uh, another case in which uh, capacity is low, but CSO involvement is high. And then a third case in which both administrative capacity and civil society organization involvement are high. So I gathered based on that, uh, that data, I was able to narrow down, down to these three cases, uh, Bagua Grande, low, low case, Sikwani, the low high case, and Satipo, the high high case in these three different parts of, uh, of Peru. And then I also, uh, to make the, the cases more similar and comparable across different types of municipalities, I use a number of different criteria, uh, like population, poverty level, the type of municipality, the altitude, the ecological region, and political variables as well. Uh, waste service performance, I measure by looking at collection performance and disposal performance. Uh, collection performance is uh, captured uh, in terms of the degree to which the streets are clean or have areas where trash is overflowing, rotting, accumulating, and disposal performance in terms of the infrastructural conditions uh, and the treatment of waste in the facilities in which uh, municipalities use to dispose of their waste. The main dependent variables are office special, specialization uh, in terms of the organizational structure of the office, the coordination processes, processes within the office, whether the office has documents, uh, policy and diagnostic documents, manage, a management system, and also the differentiation of the equipment that is available, the operational machinery, the allocation of the budget, uh, the personnel that they have available. Uh, and both uh, office specialization and equipment differentiation in terms of looking at, it in, at them in terms of how specific they are for each service. So whether they're specific for waste collection and for waste disposal or whether a municipality uses them in aggregate, all the resources for all types of services. And just to summarize the outcomes, what I found in the ground in this municipality is, of course, the streets are clean, uh, but they do a terrible job at managing uh, the disposal of their waste. They are just dumping all, side, all sorts of waste in an open field that uh, nobody treats, nobody works there. There's no type of um, uh, human or machinery effort to be able to manage the whole site. Municipality, Sikwani is a similar case. The streets are really clean. When you go at, walk around at night and when you walk around in the morning, you can see that the streets have these conditions. Uh, they are very neat. 
But uh, while they do have a dump site that is um, that has some people working around and some uh, investment in terms of infrastructural facilities to manage to sort of manage the disposal part, uh, they they've over the years uh, sort uh, ended up just dumping waste all over the area without very, with very minimal uh, management of how waste is controlled and the treatment it receives. So it's just people accumulating the waste in piles, in piles, disorganized piles with no covering at all, which is a minimal uh, method of treating waste uh, in, in these types of contexts. Now this other municipality does a great job at cleaning the streets and also at, uh, at managing the disposal part of the service. Uh, and they have the machinery, they have the teams, they have uh, uh, the methods, the processes, they have a series of things that they do to be able to produce this uh, high quality service. And so the question is, why do all succeed in providing a simple, simple waste collection? And why do two of the, the cases fail to provide complex waste disposal properly? What, what are they doing differently? And I use some quotes uh, from my interviews to be able to illustrate this and show some representative patterns of, of, uh, of what I found. And here, uh, what we see is um, this uh, quote that from a top uh, management official that uh, sort in a way exemplifies an important pattern that, not, that, I, that I found. And uh, what, what he told me is that we have a waste dump site where we only have one security guard to control vehicle flow. No one else works there or in the office for this specific service. We occasionally request the, the, request the infrastructure office for machinery to cover the holes, but many, many times they're busy in their own projects. Our office does not have machinery for waste disposal, but, uh, and this is important, we do have about 100 people working in three units. What are the three units? Uh, waste collection, street sweeping, and gardening, but nothing for waste disposal itself. And so this is showing uh, the type of attention, uh, the, the differences in the attention that the two services are, are experiencing. One, uh, one seemed as more important and deeming of more resources and the other one just left uh, on the side. This other quote also illustrates some patterns or causal mechanisms that I found mostly about um, differences in treatment of the workers. Um, and here, uh, what I was told by uh, an employee of the dump site, who's also a member of an indigenous community, uh, because the, this municipality employs uh, members of indigenous community that own the land that they are supposed to be managing adequately. Um, so that's part of the agreement that they have. But what, what she told me was that we walk up a very steep high, uh, hill for one hour and a half from our community to work at the dump site. We get there at 12,500 feet above sea level, very exhausted. And these are ladies in their 50s, 60s. Uh, there is no restroom to wash ourselves or shower after moving waste around. Uh, and there is no water or electricity. We are terribly treated. There is nothing to enjoy. Uh, this, uh, this facility actually has to steal electricity from a cable or a private cable to be able to, put, to get some light into the rooms in which these ladies are are working or staying overnight to take care of the whole facility. So this shows uh, the different treatment that uh, people at the dump site are, are receiving compared to what, uh, what, what I observe also uh, to waste collection workers. And I'll explain a little in a few slides more. This other quote um, shows um, the extent to which the job of managing waste disposal is not sufficiently understood by top managers. And what this manager of a dump site, another dump site told me is that I manage the dump site, but the waste office manager, my boss, does not come to see my work with her own eyes. She makes assumptions based on what she listens from others and criticizes my work. She is just focused on paperwork and does not make, does not make that time to come here. And I do not get what I need to do the job well. We are also very disorganized. Uh, I even have two direct bosses and I don't know what and when to report to whom. So there's, uh, there's partially ab abandonment here of this uh, dump site manager. And there's also there are also issues of coordination at the office levels of who's going to oversee the dump itself. And so the, 
the manager of the dump uh, is confused about what to do because she receives mixed messages from both supervisors. And this other quote uh, reflects actually what uh, the, the successful case does, um, showing what are the conditions, uh, managerial conditions and the approach that they have for both services and what they're doing to make uh, uh, the performance of both simple and complex services in case of uh, collection and disposal uh, are, is being done to, to achieve that. So what uh, this uh, manager, waste manager, top waste manager told me was that our waste management office has four different units each with their own operational plans and studies. And the units are selective collection, so the sorting of waste, uh, sweeping, street sweeping, the landfill itself, and composting and recycling, treating, treated as one. Most of us are environmental engineers, uh, which is very different from the other cases. They don't have any type of uh, experts uh, in the other locations. Uh, that have experience on the matter. Uh, to obtain the capacity we need, I draft plans for each unit and negotiate directly with those uh, approving the policy documents. Uh, we also develop well-documented policy reports of the issues, uh, solutions, and budgets. And this is how they get approved so we can deliver the services, the two services adequately. Um, it's a totally different story that we see um, in terms of uh, uh, the administrative capabilities in, in the waste offices in, compared to the other two waste offices. So, um, some contributions for research based on, on, on this, this study um, and uh, what we can learn is that um, more specific administrative capacity measures uh, are critical. Um, and so using tighter measures allow us to learn more about, um, about the conditions of uh, the offices providing the services themselves that could help us understand better about why performance uh, is, uh, why we're seeing the performance we see, and in this case, why we're seeing the differences we observe. So disaggregating capacity is important in this case. That uh, the, other, the, other, the other aspect that we learn is that capacity, uh, capacity varies. So uh, it's not the same for all services, even though we might expect that within the same office, looking at the same policy domain like waste management, um, with all the resources that they aggregate, they could be able to perform all sorts of services well. But that's not the case. Um, so what it tells us is that uh, different services require different types of uh, capabilities at the office level. So understanding that uh, offices have different capabilities for each of the services that they provide is also critical for, for research when we're trying to identify the variables that are important for, uh, for our studies. Um, the nuanced approach of service performance, looking at service performance as not just all services are equal. Actually, services are different. They have different capacity levels. They have different characteristics. They have different implications. Um, and so uh, as in the case of waste collection and disposal, waste collection being uh, more based on routine management, requiring low skill, waste disposal requires more, uh, more technical knowledge, more sophisticated infrastructural uh, investments. And so they are very different in that sense and understanding those distinctions uh, are critical also for research. Now, not all services are equal and that helps understand why performance uh, varies across services. Uh, and also um, the, 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 the way that there are ways of classifying service complexity based on different dimensions of the tasks themselves, like I, like I used. And in the case, uh, in this case, I just, I don't intend to generalize this tables for all types of services, but in this particular um, policy domain, like waste management, it helped me identify differences in, in, in a simple service like collection and a more complex one like uh, disposal using the managerial dimension, uh, technical knowledge dimension and the cost dimension. And more broadly for public administration research, uh, it shows us that um, how we could improve uh, our insights and our understanding of mechanisms uh, using qualitative data. Uh, in public administration research, we're not used to uh, using qualitative methods to understand uh, the results uh, or the puzzles that we have. We tend to use the data that's available and explain effects of causes, but we're not, making the effort that's important to actually speaking to uh, 
uh, the people working at the offices or the people being affected by the services or all, all other actors involved around that would allow us to understand why are we seeing the outcomes that we that we are finding. So that's also important for, for the research part uh, or the theoretical contributions of the study I do. In terms of the patterns, um, I identified a, a number of patterns. Uh, one is that uh, having uh, these municipalities have a specialized organizational structure for collection. There's none for disposal. Uh, so they are not considering the differences between the two services. Uh, so they are basic, uh, basically assuming that they are the same. So that with the same structure, they can do the same job adequately, but that's not the case. Uh, management teams are mainly qualified, obviously for, uh, for collection, to, for setting up the collection routines themselves. They don't have the technical knowledge to perform that other part of the service, which is uh, waste disposal. As a result of this, uh, the procedures that are standardized and implemented are only centered around waste collection. And uh, the other aspect that I noticed is that um, there is high competition for the machinery, the heavy machinery that is needed in uh, waste disposal sites uh, with other offices. The machinery is owned by the infrastructure office. Since there's uh, so much demand, uh, it's very hard for a weak waste management office to actually get uh, their demand scheduled uh, for the use of these uh, of the savvy machinery that are actually the municipal municipalities tend to have few of these. So it's uh, very complicated to compete with other areas that might seem more important politically uh, than waste disposal that nobody sees. Uh, Another problem is uh, the low morale uh, and sense of discrimination among field workers. Uh, so this affects motivation and always workers uh, face this problem. There's, uh, they all face discrimination, low salaries, uh, unstable uh, jobs and contracts, uh, marginalization, uh, different treatment compared to people working in the office. Uh, but there's a difference with uh, waste disposal workers and the uh, and that is that uh, they are not seen at all. Uh, waste disposal sites are located far from the city. So nobody sees what their jobs actually involve and how complex and the struggles that they, that they have to face on a daily basis compared to uh, street sweepers that are seen every day, mostly on the streets, they can be easily supervised. And so what managers do is basically generalize the challenges for people doing the waste collection part to the, waste disposal, the people working at the waste disposal sites. So their struggles that are, are, uh, are more complex, larger, more demanding, uh, are uh, equated with the struggles that street sweepers have. And, and so there, when they uh, express their, their issues, are, they are just uh, neglected in a way. So, and uh, more broadly, there's a general misconception from managers uh, about what uh, the disposal service implies. And uh, top managers, politicians, local politicians are well aware of the, of the costs and the infrastructural requirements that waste disposal has, but they're not aware enough about um, the managerial issues, uh, the managerial implications of uh, waste disposal itself um, the, the technical knowledge that it requires and also the implications in terms of the health, how the health of the workers might be exposed and the, the larger risks that they have to face uh, at, a, at, a dump, uh, at a dump or a landfill. So that's also an important distinction. No, just two more slides to finish. Policy implications and a key question here is, uh, does this mean that global South cities should just hire managers with fancy degrees from wealthy countries to address all these issues? No, like that could be one thing we could think about, but most certainly not. The evidence doesn't show that. Uh, what it does show is that non-specialized capacity is important to keep the streets clean. Yeah. We can, they can do the job well with minimal capacity, minimal organization, some resources, some people, they can set up their routines properly and keep the public uh, happy and politicians also content. Uh, but what it also shows is that investing more at the office level on the capacity that's specific to the service, especially if the service is more complex, is going to have higher returns in terms of the performance uh, of both services. Uh, if, if, we have, uh, if these municipalities pay more attention to 
the differences in the in capacity and uh, and investing in those capa different cap capabilities that are required by uh, each of the services, then the results uh, based on these findings and quantitative findings are going to be uh, crucial for, for, for them too. It also implies a holistic uh, and also differentiated approach, not only looking at human resources, but also at the organizational structure within the office, uh, at the policies and how different they are and specifically are for each of the services, the procedures, uh, the equipment, and also compassionate leadership. You know, not just traditional leadership that understands that giving uh, orders and others have to follow and that only limits uh, its, its vision to what is directly visible and observable, but leadership that really is open to understanding about the different uh, complexities of uh, different types of jobs. And uh, finally, distinguishing the policy measures by service complexity. Um, and this will help address, more effectively address issues of service performance, especially if the services have environmental implications. And it's also imp more important for municipalities that are, that are weak and mostly uh, found in, which, is, which are mostly found in global South cities. And that is the end. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for your presentation, Renzo. Thank you. Um, if you can't see very well, Homa, too, I'm happy to I'm happy to help in the room here. But <laughs> Jess and Bernie have their hands up. Sure. Okay. Then. Okay. Is that, is that all right? Should we go ahead? I, right. I I saw you first, Jess. If that's okay, ladies first, and then and and then Bernie, and then Homa. I'm not going to steal your thunder, so please <laughs> let me just. I'll help. I don't. I don't have a title. Uh -huh. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so uh, I, I, I'm not sure I could stress how important I think that this project is um, for so many reasons uh, that I'm, we can chat about at some point later. Um, one, this is a literature that I'm not um, as familiar with as I'd like to be. And so one question I have for you is how well you think that the literature actually distinguishes between simple and complex services. Um, and if you think that they do a great job, then make it very clear at the beginning, because I'm looking at your chapter and it's not as sort of abundantly clear how, what dimensions along which you would differentiate between sort of simple and complex service delivery. If you don't think it does a great job, then all the more reason to have a great two by two in here that I think you have a version of specific to trash collection versus disposal in this presentation, but I didn't see in here. And this is really, really important because it really would speak to the generalizability of what you're doing here, right? You have like taken one thing that we, a lot of us think of like as kind of one set of services, right, and said it actually really matters, the differences between collection and disposal, and the, I'm going to specify for you, I mean, if the literature doesn't already do this, I'm going to specify for you the dimensions along which we could characterize something as simple versus complex, and this is all the more important because one could imagine that whether something is considered complex or not is in some way contingent on the capacity, right, and that complexity is is actually a function of how much capacity you have to achieve a particular task, right? Something is less complex if you have all the pieces in place already and know how to solve the problem, right? And so, um, and so if you're going to suggest that those are independent measures, I would love to see either in the introduction, at like as early as the introduction, or just simply like bam at the start of your theory methods chapter, a really just clear two by two that says, you know, if we were to think beyond collection and disposal, right, to, you know, broader questions of like water sanitation or I don't know, road maintenance or something like that. How can you, for those of us that, that do wanna think beyond this and wanna say, look at all this great work you've done, how can I use it to think about these other areas of service provision? How would I do that, right? Is there a two by two that I can look at and say, okay, here's what high versus low, here are the relevant dimensions of complexity that are important for thinking about here. That's awesome. I have, so, I have so many more like I, I think it's great I'm really really excited about your project but I'll just stop thank you no uh yeah you're totally totally right um I need to include uh two by two there and also uh 
clarifying the dimensions in that part in those two chapters, especially that they are the introductory chapters. Um, the two by two is, or they're actually a table on complex service complexity differences is in the quantitative chapter. Okay. But I have to move it further up um, in that introduction for the reasons you, you mentioned. So yes, for sure. And the literature doesn't do a good job at distinguishing them. So I think, yeah, it makes sense. Thank you. Um, yeah, Bernie, please go ahead. <laughs> All right. So uh, nice presentation. I like that. Uh, it seemed to me, I've got to build on what Jess said a little bit, that really using, the using in your title simple and complex, it's really looking at complexity of systems. I wouldn't worry about the word simple. Yeah, I just I, say, I think you know, I agree. you're looking at complexity from you know, very simple, but just use complexity because you're looking at complex systems. Uh, I think that might focus it a little better, uh, what you're trying to do. I realize that your your data that you presented here is, it's, it's sort of like a pilot project. You looked at three different, you know, you, three different categories of communities. Mm -hmm. You don't have, you don't have a multiplicity in any category. And it's all quantitative, it's qualitative. And yet I know you have some quantitative data. And it's almost like you have to hit more, you have quantitative data because qualitative data alone may turn some people off and go, well, just here. And so, and then I just as a comment, the, the closing where you did the, the last two uh, issues and I can't think what the other, your last two two slides like were to me were really uh, you know issues and policy implications. I think that was a really interesting closure, uh, and that brings it to that brings it together pretty well. And then finally, just a question: you have no everything you looked at is within the municipality. You didn't reach out and get an input from the community. What does the community think about, particularly this? You know, we're dumping the trash somewhere. We're not doing a regular. You, you didn't, you know. Is our, our and I don't know if you know, in, in, in East, if, if that's an easy place to find. Uh, if you were in uh, North America, you could probably find a nonprofit or something that would give you a very good comment. You might not have that in, in your in where you studied it there. But that, that seemed to be. Because uh, all, all your questions seem to be in the municipality and not exterior to it. Thank you so much, Bernie. These are all great comments. And um, to, you, to your last question, um, so I didn't, I do have um, a, a lot of interviews from civil society organizations that are involved in the process. I just didn't include them uh, because I wanted this chapter to focus and this presentation to focus okay. on the administrative part. But uh, it does. Um, take away a lot of the larger picture and the larger um, problems that are involved in this. So yeah, you're totally right. And, and uh, I'll, I'll try to find a way to okay. mention some of that for sure in this, but yeah, yeah, I agree. Thank you. <clears throat> I really don't want to steal your thunder, Homa. So I, I'm not sure if you can see <laughs> other hands going up in the Ostrom room. I know it's hard with the camera. So if, yeah, if not, please go ahead and maybe you can at least, you know, take a good look for the folks online. Yeah. No, we cannot see it from here, but uh, on, uh, hi, uh, sorry, Jamie in the online, um, uh, online participants has a question. Oh, that's okay. Yeah, so yeah, let's turn to Jamie next and then, then we'll come back, yeah. Sure. Yeah, okay, Renzo, I always love hearing about this work because I second when, what Jess said that it's, it's so important. Um, and I think it made me, as Bernie was speaking, I realized that um, if you need other ways to think about like the community participation, like from the community themselves, if you need ideas for how to evaluate, Lynn's police studies that she did with Roger Parks um, offer a lot of different kinds of examples. And um, they looked at things like, like, you know, were residents satisfied with the type of lighting, for instance, as, you know, as a measure of their satisfaction with public services, or 
you know, the size of potholes on the road. And so I'm so thinking about things adjacent to trash might also help you to get a sense of um, citizen satisfaction with, you know, with the public goods that are delivered and sort of help you build the context around trash collection and disposal. Thank you, Jamie. That's a great point. And um, I do hope to not only expand the number of municipalities in the future, um, maybe in, in Peru for now or other countries, but what you say is, is important I haven't done is to actually speak with members, uh, citizens. I do speak with uh, members of indigenous communities involved in the service and other civil society organizations that participate, but the actual users is an, is an important uh, actor that I should include. So yeah, great point. Thank you so much. Okay. Now I think we're ready. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Good. Um, so super exciting presentation. And I, I totally buy your basic um, argument, your story. Um, but I would like to push you a bit when it comes to the policy implications, because um, you're kind of assuming that this um, capacity is simply there. You're taking it as uh, quantitative people would call it exogenous. It's just something that we have in place. Um, and you kind of brush to the side a bit the political incentives. And I think when it comes to policy implications, it would be really interesting to understand a bit better these cases. Why is it that in some locations uh, there's att attention paid to, this, uh, to, to these complex tasks and in others not? Uh, is this because um, the people who are affected by this negatively have a stronger say in these locations maybe? Because when it comes to the policy implications, it's maybe not so helpful to view this naively just through the lens of complexity and say it would be good to have uh, better uh, capacity to deal with the complex tasks but to really understand the root causes would be important why is it not in place is it a lack of information is it a lack of incentives because otherwise you can uh, formulate all these very nice uh, suggestions um, but they might not be adopted because um, simply it might not be an information problem, it might be an incentive problem. Um, yeah, but it's, it's very exciting and it would be interesting to learn more about um, the differences between these success and failure stories. Thank you so much. Thank you for your question and your point. Um, so, um, yeah, it's, it's more complicated than, than what I showed here for sure. Um, <clears throat> And so most of this approach and looking at uh, capacity within the office also comes from, from the quantitative data that shows that um, specific capacity for waste management for both collection and disposal differently, uh, both actually um, improve the performance of both services. And when I look at um, other measures beyond uh, civil society organization involvement, local co-governance, um, uh, um, political measures that I also include. It's just the one measure that seems to stand out in terms of improving both. Uh, but when you go uh, on to the field, you see that you know, it's more, more intricate. Um, so there are many layers to, to peel. Uh, and while some managers are not as interested, so that could be a local disincentive uh, because of a low salary or low support that they might get from politicians, other managers are actually involved and they might have some support uh, at uh, the top political level, uh, but they are not aware um, of the more intricate differences in terms of capacity that they need. So that's uh, why I sort of mentioned that they do know about the infrastructural requirements, about the costs that, uh, that disposal demands compared to waste collection. Uh, but they don't actually know how to approach adequately because most municipalities don't have that experience. And so they see each other. So there's some policy diffusion there in which most municipalities are basically doing more or less the same. And so they think that they can handle the two services with what they have. And uh, because they don't have the budget, then they won't do more than, than what they can in the present. So uh, there are other layers that I should be exploring hopefully in the future. Um, it has to have to do with the interaction with a national, with a regional government and with the national government. Um, but yes, I think I think um, that's what you're saying is right, right. On the so thank you. Okay, please, yeah, Joe. <laughs> 
Thank you. Thank you for the presentation. I'm, I'm just comparing this with the, my cooperatives of farmers. There is this forward and backward linkages in terms of synergies and trade-offs. And I'm really comparing these three municipalities. When you look at them, and they're not new, they have been there for some time now. They learn from each other, especially the one that is really doing the disposal, the collection and disposal. They really synergize with each other and see that they can copy from what others are doing so that it is not status quo. The others are not able to dispose their wastage. Yeah, that's, a, that's an interesting question. Um, so that's, how, that's why, what I, why I was mentioning that there's a, a misconception, general misconception, um, because most of the municipalities surrounding these particular cases and, and most of the cases, other cases that I know of, um, is that um, it, they are doing more or less the same way of managing waste, um, treating disposal as if they could manage it with the capacity they have, sending some people to remove the trash around, um, but, um, but, and so they sort of learn from each other in that sense. So there's nothing new in these cases that they could learn from the neighboring municipalities, but in the case of the successful case at Tipo, uh, in the, is one of the very few municipalities that have a, a, a landfill, a formal, a formally approved landfill with a proper infrastructure, but there are municipalities surrounding it uh, of the same size that they could actually do some more or less the same, but they're getting to that point uh, requires to have the leadership and the management capacity to actually develop the planning uh, and the negotiating within the municipality to get the political support, the budgetary support, because these are costly studies to conduct to be able to get to the investment project staging in which they will get the, the approval and the, the funding to be able to get, uh, get to the implementation of these facilities. And so even though they might want to do the same, there are more intricate aspects um, at, at, at the leadership level, at the technical level that might make it difficult for them to actually just, uh, we wanna do this like they are doing, so we're just, um, but, um, but from my, uh, my interviews, uh, they are not interacting with each other, these cases, or with other neighboring municipalities too. So something could be done for sure about that. It could be uh, important for others, others and similar ones. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Hi, uh, just, this was a really, really interesting presentation and I, I enjoyed it and learned a lot. Uh, I just wanted to get your thoughts on two things that sort of seem to be important drivers that were sort of implicit, but I would like to learn a little bit more about the background uh, with the case studies, which is thinking about sort of two big things. First, budget, did they have roughly the same amount of budget or was it that uh, you know the ones that were successful had more budget for whatever reason? And if so, why were they either getting more money or more effective at managing the money that they had? And second, you mentioned political leadership was really important and that makes so much sense to me, but it leads to a deeper question, which is why are you getting better, more responsive political leadership in one particular place and sort of less responsive political leadership in other places? Is it electoral system? Is it just, you've got communities more mobilized? So it's sort of thinking a little bit about resources and political leadership would be interesting for me. Yeah, that, those are great questions. Um, so when, uh, when looking at the regressions, um, the budget of the municipality and the budget for waste of each municipality doesn't seem to have an effect in terms of um, waste disposal, improving waste disposal. It just improves simple waste collection. Mm -hmm. So we get, uh, I get results that actually show that waste disposal, the waste disposal budget per capita does improve only the simple part of the service, but not the other one uh, for some reason. Uh, in these three cases, uh, they have roughly the same budget per capita for waste management. Uh, I, if I remember well, Satipo has more budget already because they have uh, received this <coughs> larger infrastructural project that involves more resources. So there's a distinction there itself in terms of, of budget. The other two are more or less similar. Um, and in terms of, uh, of the politics of it, um, 
it doesn't come from politicians' ideas to promote uh, waste disposal performance improvements. Uh, it has to come based on these three cases, apparently from the technical uh, experts in the office, especially the managers leading the whole office. Uh, it's waste, the waste office is a sub office within the environmental office usually. Uh, and it's the case in these three municipalities. But the case of Satipal, a successful one, uh, they were able to do it because the managers at the time had experience in another municipality preparing environmental plans that involved more specific um, uh, strategies uh, and investments <clears throat> for waste disposal. So they took that to this larger municipality from a smaller one to a larger one, and they started developing that planning uh, for, that, for that municipality. And the mayor came from that smaller municipality too. So the mayor came with uh, one the elections in the larger provincial municipality with its own jurisdiction uh, and came with his uh, technical team. So he put the same person leading that planning in the smaller municipality to Satipo, and that's how they were able to interact. But there was a change in administration when I got there. They, it's, it was a different set of people. And the technical team had all the capabilities that were already set up, uh, all the procedures, all, all the, the people with the right training, uh, even though there's turnover, they, were, they kept bringing people because the system was already structured to require people with the expertise. Uh, but the politician had a different view. Uh, and so because of all this ongoing operation, uh, he couldn't, it wasn't in his interest to actually change it. So he would just support it. But it doesn't mean that this uh, case didn't need improvement. But those improvements were not coming as fast as they should have if the top political uh, person, the mayor, would be really connected and, and in, in, in invested in that, in that topic. So um, it's, that part is a little bit, uh, that interaction, there's a, there are more stories to tell uh, and more things to, to peel off, but it comes, it, 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 from that experience, it comes that um, it's the technical team at the office level that matters to be able to negotiate better uh, treatment and resources for waste disposal too. Uh, Scott, uh, Brian has a question here. Excellent. Good. Actually, two points. One's just clarification. Your three cases include three parts of the matrix and then don't include the fourth possibility of high capability and no CSOs. So does that not exist or some other reason? Um, the other part is, and you started to get into some of this and um, following up what Jamie said, what seems to be quite interesting, if you can find things going on in the data, are indications that the service delivery is not responsive to some simple hypothesis of, you know, bigger is better, or wealthier is better, but instead is more related to what you started just now to be talking about in terms of public administration governance differences, you know, being able to use the same or less budget better. And that would be quite interesting to the extent that some of it may be going on you know not just the cases but in your larger qualitative stuff and beyond that also just a quite interesting study thank you thank you so much brian and uh, yeah the the box or the case that i didn't that i don't look at uh is the high capacity low uh, civil society organization involvement uh, and uh, the technical reason that I didn't use it is because I wouldn't get any insights on the role of civil society organizations because uh, um, this is uh, this is the section of the two by two box that uh, that doesn't involve participation. So it would be directly hiring uh, people that want to work. So it wouldn't involve the participation of CSOs. That's why basically I left it out. The other more uh, operational reason was that um, I had to conduct field work during the pandemic. And so um, I, I had to uh, focus very quickly on the cases that I could uh, carry out field work, the field work itself. So I had uh, just not, not enough time to be able to have an extended stay in the country to really uh, get into one more case. So that's the reason why I didn't collect data from more municipalities. So that's the operational, but even if I were to collect it, I would be looking at a municipality that has really uh, uh, 
uh, experts, well-trained experts in the office that are just hiring, outsourcing the service either to direct individuals or to a for-profit uh, or a business. So it wouldn't give me uh, the type of information that I wanted for this specific project. Um, but thank you. And I, I don't think I got uh, your second question or, um, well, sorry. Okay, I'll try and follow up again. What would be interesting, and you seem to get into it in your response to the last one, the extent to which the differences in delivery are not a product of what might be the obvious uh, possibilities in terms of, you know, budget or bigger municipalities. And the analogy with would be with Lynn's policing work to say, you know, smaller municipalities were able to actually deliver good or better, even better services, um, you know, contrary to the assumption that bigger is better and that you needed to consolidate. So, you know, to show that governance matters, the kind of public administration. Thank you. Yep, yep, that's a great point too. And um, I, I do have some, published field work from four other smaller municipalities that actually show that what you're exactly saying and what we see here as well. Uh, smaller municipalities in rural areas are able to do the collection party as well as these larger municipalities. They don't have a, a huge problem with disposal. There is a problem, but it's not a huge problem because they have lower populations. And so it's not what we see in these larger municipalities that accumulate large amounts of trash in places where it rots and contaminates and produces large amounts of methane, uh, but they do actually do the job well in terms of keeping the streets clean. Uh, even though they are small, uh, with very scarce resources, with one person leading the office, and they keep the streets clean as well as these. So yeah, you're totally right. Thank you. And it looks like Jamie, maybe? Yeah. Yes, um, Renzo, I forgot to tell you earlier, and I wanna make sure you know, in case you don't see the chat, both Salih and I think that it's great that you've um, added a lot of qualitative um, uh, content and questions to, to your research, especially like your intentionality of bringing it to public administration. And I think this is important because they offer us the opportunity um, to think about value the kinds of value questions that Vincent felt were so important to political theory and public administration um, and allows us to get into the things that matter to people and to politicians and to discuss the things that data just simply doesn't tell us. So thank you for this contribution. Thank you, Jamie. Thank you, Sally, too. Uh, yes, that's, um, that's one of my main uh, objectives. Um, I, I basically think that uh, in public administration, we could learn so much more by directly speaking with the people involved. Uh, we can get more uh, information about the mechanisms that we tend to actually uh, collect information for. We tend to explain the effects, which is great and very important, but there's always that uh, what's going on within these uh, bureaucracies, what's happening with these people. These are not uh, bureaucrats are not lazy people. Uh, these are the people that I interviewed are very committed individuals um, in their own ways, but they want to do the job well. Uh, people doing the, the work in the field, uh, they are also as committed, even though they are mistreated, underpaid, undervalued, marginalized. There are so many amazing uh, uh, stories that serve as causal mechanisms to explain what we see. So yeah, with qualitative data, uh, we can we can obtain so much more insight, and we can um, actually inform the field better than than better and yeah better uh, than we would just with quantitative data itself. Thank you, Jim. Yeah, Homa, please. It's almost time, but uh, I have a like question that. Uh, whether you looked into like capital city Lima, if whether they have this uh, like uh, cap capacity for collecting uh, uh, for collecting services. Uh, Lima um, Lima has forty three municipalities, um, mm -hmm. so it's basically like like a state in a way. Mm -hmm. uh, it doesn't operate as a state, but it has forty three municipalities uh, with wide range of uh, conditions. They are very different. There are a few that are very wealthy, 
uh, very well equipped in many, uh, many aspects. There are others that are uh, really, really poor. Uh, municipalities that have large populations, small populations. So, um, but to summarize that comment, uh, they, uh, they, they do a set of different things. Some, a few outsource the service to private companies. So they don't deal with any aspect of waste is done by private companies and others just handle as these other municipalities do. So it, there's a wide variation and that's why I don't see look into Lima too much uh, because it doesn't reflect the reality of most municipalities in the country. Okay, thank you. Any, any final thoughts, Renzo, before we have to close? Uh, I just wanted to thank everyone for being here, for the questions, the comments, and uh, for the workshop again, for all the support. Mm -hmm. It's our pleasure. Well, thank you, Renzo. Thank you, Homa. <laughs> really, really, really well done. Um, and look forward to Monday, our next colloquium with Jamie from George Mason. And then we also have a special uh, event with Shoshana Zuboff, uh, surveillance capitalism author at two o'clock in the Salon series. So that'll be really interesting. Really, really great job, Renzo. Thank you. <laughs> I'm sorry for coming in late. <laughs> I was listening as I was walking. But... <laughs> In my mind, Lenny's is closer than it is. I say, like, ah, it's right there. <laughs> <laughs> no. it, looks, it looks so close. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs>